Uh, previously, Tossers went for a very big emphasis on uh, Wave Clear. Yep. And they didn't really have a late game monster. They just had a solid team. They out rotated. And that was pretty much it. They, I mean, their last pick was Gul'dan. They, Malf, Gul'dan, Sylph, Leorg, just a really solid team. Let's see if they can get as much done against Polska if they follow the same strategy. Yeah, we will see. This is a uh, this is exciting because we've seen both of these teams already come through as the underdogs. Now they're both I overdogs. I guess <laughs> I guess that would be the term. Upper dogs. Upper upper dog seems seems legit. I don't know. But either way, Valor as the first pick. Are we watching Zealots? No, this is Polska picking that up as first. The Tiger's ban. I wonder if it leads into a Sonya setup again. Maybe. Did they ban that first? Last time? Maybe they did. Another Arthur oh, first yes. pick for Tossers. Nice. They know what they like. <laughs> That's yeah. enough urine. This is the uh this is the classic combo that we saw uh when Artanis actually first sort of made it into a pro game via MVP. They lost. But uh, it was sort of Artanis in exchange for Alarak. The classic combo was, of course, Alarak into the root. Uh, but then Alarak was banned out once, and they were like, you know what, we'll try Artanis. Didn't work, but that's where we originally saw it. And that and, was before the change. And of course, Artanis is just the better Protoss. I know that may make Alarak fans a little bit salty, but oh. they can both pull someone in. Artanis is more survivable. It's got similar damage. Uh, he can pull someone in from further. He has yeah. arguably a more impactful heroic. So, yeah. I'm not sure we'll see any MVP black draft with Artanis plus Alarak these days anymore. No, that was <laughs> would, would have been cool, but unlikely to happen. So, we have Rhaegar, very standard right now for Polska. And Diablo Ooh. finally making his way into a game. Yeah, today no Diablo yet. Did we even have Diablo yesterday? I know. No, we didn't. He was banned once. True. Uh, On this, this main first stream, Diablo. no Diablos. So another Lightning new hero by Polska Pimienta. Was what was that? Lightning Breath. It was buffed. Yeah, bigger turning it's rate. Unlikely, but it would make me happy. Faster turning <laughs> rate, more damage pulses, which makes it better against um, limited charges of spell block. Yeah. It has a few other effects as well, I guess, but like more fluid damage distribution when you do turn. Otherwise, there may be like someone in the middle of the lightning breath who doesn't get hurt because there's a damage pulse before it and after especially now that the turning rate is higher i think that's probably the main reason that they did it yeah probably rag has somehow managed to sneak all the way through up to now and will finally get banned out uh by the tossers here i guess swapping someone and then double rooting them is decent yeah, this is true, it's very effective. This is the strategy we expect, uh, we will probably expect to see if he does take the double swap later. What's going through their mind? They, they, they're removing Zul because he's a threat on Diablo. I guess a bone prison every time. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the, uh, it giant once. killer, the giant's curse, that's the one. Yeah, I guess so. It's a pretty big deal. But if, hmm. I guess they're thinking about Zul or Leo. I feel like Leo fulfills a similar threat here. Yeah, I could uh, I could see either. Uh, Leo or Tannis? That's what they ran last time, so... Could see that again for him. Depends how... This is the question. Uh, Polska actually had a... Both of these teams have had a chance to watch each other's semis. True. Cool, Dan banned out. That's fine. That was also obscenely effective last game. Yeah, it was good fires, good sustained damage, and we already know that they like it. Uh, Malf gives him even cooldown reduction, getting more fell flames and corruptions. Mm. Yeah, as if his fell flame cooldown wasn't already pretty fast. Yeah, it hits <laughs> faster than Abathur slaps almost. <laughs> this is true. So, two more picks. This need probably a second tank. Um, don't think we'll see a Sonya from them, and also this isn't. It's an okay map for Sonya, not the best one. Bad that's matchup, course, though, Infernal. against yeah. Diablo. Gonna get seen. Well, Diablo only has technically a one interrupt for yeah. uh, Whirlwind. His charge doesn't interrupt unless he hits her into a wall. But he's got the Soul Shield, which blocks slam damage. And spin damage, yeah, very true. And uh, Sonya has no form of percentage damage. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, though, it could be, vice it could be uh, flip reversed. 
and have uh, Polska pick it, which we've been thinking about for a while. Yeah, Polska could go for Zarya and Sonia. Yeah, there's Li Ming and Johanna. So similar to last time, only swapping uh, Li Ming in instead of a. Uh, Instead of the Gul'dan, I don't like and that. I don't think leaving as nearly as impactful as uh, Gul'dan here. No, I'd say so. Not, I'd say not so either. But if they have to uh, bring out something, Li Ming does have decent damage. Hmm. And they've got Johanna Jaina, to give the group ups. Just wonder if Jaina would have been better here. Maybe she's even more vulnerable to Diablo. That's true. I find the issue. She at least Li Ming can port. Jaina will just get flipped over. Leaving yep. is safer, but her damage is not super impactful on Diablo. They still, I guess, Artanas will take Titan Killer, so they have a way of dealing with Diablo late game. Their wave clear is uh, good. Yeah, like Li, Li Ming, she she has dissuade to great, um, <laughs> which uh, could help a little bit. A against new Diablo. coin termed yesterday. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything except dissuade the enemy from walking forward. Falstad Global and Leoric is stolen. Okay, no Sonya. Yeah, that's fine. This is an infernal. <laughs> yeah. And last pick, number Didn't damage dealer, ranged. some kind of auto. Sylvanas again. Uh, Sylvanas. Gonna have a bit of trouble getting through the tanks. Some with giant killers, so rain. Okay. okay. First one in the open league. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's a ranged auto attacker. Yes, it is. Does he have a giant killer talent? I don't think he does. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't. <laughs> Oh dear. Little uh, mobility, no giant killer uh, talent, even though he's a ranged auto attacker. Yeah. And he needs to be low life in order to perform optimally. Can I be honest, I think I would have preferred Raina. Yeah, I agree. Um, hmm. I, I guess Suljin can save himself against an Entomb lockdown better than Raina. That's true. It's true, just pops Taz Dingo and waits. And. Um, Zuldin also gets the bonus range if he auto attacks often mm -hmm. enough with his level one talent. He's it's also an easier got, map to do it on because it's smaller. And he's got an infinite uh, season marksman variant as well, except it doesn't proc from minion kills but from auto attacks on heroes. Leo yep. and Diablo are some of the bigger punching backs in the game that will generally take hits without too much fancy punishments. Yep. Um, once uh, the shadow charge of Diablo is gone, he's pretty much free hit for Zuldin. There's also the option of using Zuljin as the solo laner here, but they have wolves, so I don't expect that to be too likely. But let's introduce them, let's starting with the team on the right-hand side. It is going to be Tossers, playing for them. Li Ming being played by Shift, Mafurin being played by Kronaz, the uh, Johanna being played by Roskbeg, Artanis by Wolves, and Zuljin, first time in Open League EU, played by Tix. On the left in the blue, Posca, Pimienta, Mopsio and Falstad. Uh, sorry, Mopsio and Diablo, Gluehammer and Falstad, Razaf on Rhaegar, Sihu on Vala, and Potiboss on Leoric. Let's block the minion wave. Yep, good to try and prevent that from pushing up, which is not happening for Tossers. They're just going to position themselves here. They have no vision. Uh, we're just going to use Kronas by looks of it to try and scout out here. We have two Season Marksmen, one on Farsad, one on Artanes, and you want Axe on Zul'jin. Every five basic attacks against heroes increases his attack damage by one and a quarter. Yep, he gets the bonus range doing... after 120 attacks. Yep, which is a lovely little bit of extra. Good start immediately onto Roskmeg, and he is gone, but Mopsio getting punished for it. One for one instantly. <coughs> Both tanks getting punished. Uh, very nice uh, damage there by Tix on Diablo, getting that final hit there, taking him down. Some nice stacks as well. That's a good one for one. When you take away Diablo, you stop his soul progress. You get those bonus season marksman stacks of both Artanis and Zul'jin. That's a good trade. Yep, worked out well for him. So... Wolf's going to be clearing this bot lane. He's going to be the one in it, not leaving Zul'jin there. He does win bot lanes. Uh, he does win solo lanes pretty well, but he's also immensely gankable. So instead, he's going to be in the rotation where he has allies to protect him. Mm -hmm. Wolf's just clearing lanes for the moment and getting poked down. With Hammer coming down to try and harass him, there's no way they'll get the kill. But it does continue to put pressure on. Now the question is, Kronas. Doesn't have his extra range yet on level 4, so he wasn't going to be able to get the root. Instead, just harassing Falstad back. Wolf's turning in what little gems he has. I always have my question marks for these early gem turn-ins. You're reducing a risk, which says that you're basically expecting that you could die. I always wonder, yeah. shouldn't you just save until 50? But everyone does it, and I guess you should, especially yeah, when I... you have free time. Yeah, you have free time, and you're not gaining anything. You're not roaming, you're not 
doing anything in lane, you can't zone your opponent now. I see their issue with turning in early. Yeah, I guess so. It's just the early turn ins when you miss a whole minion wave, those are the ones that yes, trigger. Yes, those are a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> Gul'jin, once again, getting a bit of harassment, takes some damage from Shikul, but able to tank through that quite nicely. And right now, Zul'jin's actually keeping up with Artanis in terms of stacking on his uh, auto-attack talent. Very nice. Yeah, in fact, he's ahead. <laughs> Doing a really good job there. But level 4 is hit first here by Polska Panienta. And we see the Filthy Unto Death on Leoric Speed Demon on Mopsio, oh. giving that little bit of extra movement speed. Haven't seen that in a while. Stunned or Rooted increases the Diablo's movement speed to man speed for five seconds. Uh, how many are there? There's just the root by mouth. The funny uh, thing about it, you can walk into it by choice to get, yeah, movement, get speed. The extra movement speed. I don't know if you want to do that, but... It's five seconds. It's a decent, it's a decent boost. If you can get it right on the tail end when it's expiring, could could do okay. Yeah, but with it will still slow you for the same period yeah, of he time. He is rooted and he's out. He's so <laughs> fast. Look at this. Speedy. Speedy. He charges in. He wanted to try and flip someone there and flip a bit for his team. Didn't get it. Wolves here. Going to do a little bit of the harassment. Two pointy. Flips. Glue hammer. They're going to focus him down and they get the kill. A beautiful play by Wolves. Very nice. Uh, once again, amazing Artanis play by Wolves. And they also managed to cancel the barrel roll, which means Falstad could not get away anymore. Uh, yeah. Also really like the Zul'jin play so far from uh, Tix. Very talented player. Plays Medivh, Sylvanas and Zul'jin. Uh, they're all ranged, yes, but they play out so differently. And he's got a deep health pool, man. Yeah, it's true. Rosmek trying to tank, trying to be a distraction here. Getting zoned out. Second that Iron Skin is gone. Mopsio with the body box, but the heal is too much. He's Johanna. He is very tanky. And uh, I'm, I'm interested because, I, like I mentioned last time we spoke about Zul'jin, that I know he has been played in, N, uh, in NA. He might have been played in EU. There are a lot of games. I might have forgotten one. So we did a bit of harassment there. Uh, I know Kadaris was in the chat earlier, so I'm going to ask just in case he's still there. Has Sol Jim been played in HGC EU? Because I can't remember if he has. Of course, we I'm know. Curious. And if so, did he win? He might have been played in EU Open Division, of course, off stream, but we know we haven't yeah. casted him yet. So that's a premiere for us, at least. Yeah, so if, he, if you're still here, Kadaris, give us the stats. Give it to you us, Kadaris. You, you master. In the meantime, we're seeing a lot of harassment shift. Landing some orbs, they're all very close range. He's not currently doing as much, getting as much value as he really could. But every little helps. Rosmeg, Iron's getting, but the body blocks are insane. But he's getting so sustained, he makes it to the, to the vent, but it doesn't save him. He goes down. Potiboss was able to escape, though, after getting focused down by Shift and Ticks. Oh, very nice swap, Siku, and the immediate follow up nice from Shift. Orb. That was so well done. Shift was ready for it. The number one skill for a mage is to be ready with your spells. And sometimes yeah. you'll have a mage and they'll look at a warrior it's like, why did that warrior power slide into a tower? Uh, you know, and it was just the mage actually potentially snoozing and not following up. Shift so fast, it's the hallmark of a good one. Yeah, Flit's going super well. He is, even though he's not getting as much orb value as, uh, like I said earlier, he is doing insane in terms of following up on the kills. Top lane still being pushed. They will get the fountain pretty easily here. For those who are wondering on Zul Jim, because he's not been played in open division yet. Uh, he's already over half stacked on U1 Axe. Rosmeg just going to tank his way through, try to escape. Let the killing begin. It was the level 4 and Vicious Assault. That extra Axe bonuses on level 7. Yep, uh, getting additional crit procs. And also it uh, uh, reduces the cooldown when you hit uh, heroes with it. So you can do it more often. Very useful. And probably at level 13, he'll take the mobility. Every time you hit those uh, Grievous Axes, you get 25% bonus movement speed for two seconds. It's not a great increase, but with how often you can cast it, it's kind of the kiting potential uh, mobility that you uh, need with Zildur. Yeah, Mopsio getting that speed boost thanks to the Condemn. Charging forward, trying to grab anyone, but also block any protection from Rosmeg, oh. and does a perfect job there. Of course, Condemn. I was thinking Blessed Shield and Entangle, but Condemn. Being a yeah. quarter second stun, I, I bet if Johanna could choose, she would delete the stun aspect of Condemn this game. Yeah, just to try and get rid of Diablo without giving him that extra boost, making him into a quite actual speed demon, doing an amazing job of it. Poti pushing it back. Uh, Kalaris has told me not in EU, no. Zul'jin has not been played. So this is the first EU professional game that has been cast uh, that we know of with Zul'jin in it. Yeah, it is a professional game because this is a prize money match. I guess you're exactly. right. <laughs> this professional game, they're looking for that spot into the HCC and Tix, all at the moment, doing a pretty good job on it, yet to die. Only deaths from their team have all been on Johanna, and that's three. 
Yeah, she's been getting flipped. Look, she used Unstoppable now at full HP. Rosmag. Oh, what it is, is that? Lightning breath. What is Burn that? Down ticks, but there comes Dazingo. He shreds through Mopsio. The web there very nearly hits Mopsio. him. And Artanis, the bust is used. Wolf is healed. He tries to make it through the wall. Oh, gets killed by the hammer rags. And Zuljin is so low. He's getting drained. Potiboss kills him. <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> Oh man, Diablo nearly wow. goes down. We know that feeling. He's got <laughs> such a big health pool. And with that soul shield, what a fight there. The Entomb was just immaculate. Trapping Zuljin and uh, actually trapping uh, Johanna as well. The Tastingo saved Zuljin initially. Yeah, a took... lot just happened yeah. <laughs> in those couple seconds. Spells happened. People clicked buttons. People died. Other people didn't <laughs> die. It was pretty incredible. Yeah. You had to be there. I like the fact that Zul'jin survived the lightning breath and died to drain home. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. just walked back in and got drained to death. Well, he it was cool to see, but yeah, he was shredding through Diablo there. But like you said, Diablo able to tank his way through thanks to those full souls. Oh, oh, he might not be so lucky now. Very simple machine. Tackle Swarm of Wolves trying to escape. He's rooted. He has Speed Demon now, but he's completely separated against Silas and gone by souls. <coughs> yep, the only thing that Diablo will speed here is the deletion of his souls. You'll speed back to life a bit, thanks yeah. to the deletion of said souls. Uh, isn't it ironic <laughs> that like 80% of the time you'd rather keep the souls and yeah. just keep your I don't your want to come in? back earlier. Yeah. <laughs> it's too early. What am I doing here? I'm not ready. Please, mom. Oh, I, wanted, I wanted to get a drink while I was dead. Now I can't. It's oh. the worst. Well, anyway, he's back and he <laughs> will start his ascent back up to souls. Oftentimes when Diablo dies once, he'll die twice because he's angry. He lost his souls. He's used to a high level of survivability. One soul, yeah. two soul, three. Watch him go oh, into the fight shit. and have more trouble. Dissuasion wow. beam. Dissuasion dissuades him from being alive anymore. Nicely done by Shift there. Fala is fully convinced. Another kill. Yeah. He fully convinced him to stop him dying, uh, to stop being alive. Mopsio gets rooted. Speed demon activated. Nice gust for disengage. Mopsio very far away me, from me. anyone who can help him. <laughs> but he is escaping very slowly. If Mopsio <laughs> is a speed demon, should we say mop mop? Anyway. Mop mop. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, yeah, see what you went for there. Web uh, Weavers he... come out here for the tossers. Uh, they're not at level 13 yet, but they should be pretty close. Uh, unfortunately, this minion wave is a pretty integral part of reaching that, because now they feel forced to push in without talent lead. Could be risky. Yeah. They're going to try pushing it. They're going to try it, though. They're just staying as a group, though. Even without a talent lead, it's still hard to take a full team fight. They're just going to rush this down. They will guarantee get this fort. Uh, due to a big group up uh, by Polska in the mid lane, clearing up the first web weaver. They're kind of just going to abandon top lane completely and clear bot lane too. Okay, the, the web weaver's still pretty healthy, so they did have to deal with that, and they get there on time, which means potentially more siege damage in the middle here. Now there is the flank risk. We've got Mighty Gust and Tomb. We've got members on every side. Did they go too far? The fort is still alive. We see Polska hey, Pavieta coming in here. Mighty Gust, Suljin gets isolated together with the rest. Lightning Breath comes out. Blessed Shield misses. There's Tazdingo trying to shred through. He is unkillable, but he's running out of things to stay him. Dies to a minion. And now it is Artanis completely separated. It's two kills to one right now. Here comes the Suasion Beam trying to take down anyone. But no, it's three <coughs> kills for one in favor of Polska. Very nice move there by Polska Pimienta. Getting the mighty gust and isolating people away. Tastingo cannot save you from a spot like that. Uh, he did go for the Eye of Sultan, by the way, getting that movement speed. Mm -hmm. But that would not be enough to save himself. Cool, man. Cool to see Lightning Breath coming out. It's a short cooldown heroic, 60 seconds. The buff, if you just tuned in, that recently happened in the patch just a few days ago, is a quicker turning rate. So you can be more effective with who you hit if yeah. they move. Anyway, Leoric has been serving victims to him on a silver platter. Potiboss with some immaculate entombs. Yeah, Mopsio. You can see here, the Kadem wasn't being used for a while until everyone was there because Mopsio, uh, because Rosbeck needed to get in front of Mopsio. They weren't able to finish him off. Mopsio currently with 68 souls, so on a reasonable amount of tankiness right now. And thanks to his level 1 talent, Fountains and Globes top him up very quickly. Fire Devil. Uh, oh, Devil's yeah, Do, Devil's Do. Devil's Do, that's the one. Very strong. Uh, we also have Le uh, Life Seed coming in for Malfurion. Not going with that extra protection, the ice block that could stop him being gusted or anything Ew. like that. He just wants to continuously top up Zul'jin. Because even Z because uh, yes, Zul'jin does more damage when he's lower health, but he also dies when he's lower health. So you want him <laughs> to get as low as possible. This is the problem, and isn't then it? then heal back. Yeah, you need to get as low as possible and then heal it back as quick as possible. Scuffle in the top lane, a tomb was used. The silence is dropped. Rosbeck tried to escape. He got drops the blind, but completely separated and goes down. And Johanna's uh, 
been having trouble against this very tough front line here with the Entomb. Uh, unstoppable Iron Skin on Janna is great, but it has two major weaknesses. Uh, three, Force Wall, uh, Zombie Wall, and Entomb. Things that restrict her movement. Uh, things that aren't slow stuns and roots. And this is what is getting Janna over and over. Yep. Gluehammer coming Glue in Hammer. with the Mighty Gust. He's able no, to dodge I... the swap. Goes no, for the I Gust swap. and Krodaz is deleted there. Beautiful play. Dissuasion Beam. Once again, doing a little bit of damage to Falstead and Wolf's able to get the kill. He's still hiding under the fort that has oh basically my. no health. In comes Tix. It's four versus three, but Johanna's on her way. Look at their turning rate. Oh, that Entomb! The swap is good. Posey Boss completely zoned out. Tix getting huge damage. They're able to kill off Artanis, though, and the four. There's no more chase coming in here. I think Artanis needed to be just a bit more patient. Wolves has been playing yeah. such a great game. He was low life. He wanted to help his team. He felt troubled that they were going to get lightning breath like that there. Uh, it was a very deep dive here by Polska Pimienta. They, they get the kill on Malf, who I, re I think really could have benefited from uh, Ice Block. I mean, you're basically taking life seed against them too. Yeah. I think it's uh, risky. Uh, like, 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 I can see the, like I said, I can see the yeah. logic behind the life seed. But in order for it to get value, you need to be alive. Once again, spoken so true, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're Tyrael, you need to be alive. Unless you're Tyrael or Leoric, you actually need to be alive to get value out your Or abilities. Murky with, uh, with uh, Slimy Death. Oh, yeah. Or uh, Kerrigan with the respawning Ultralisk. Well, sure. Uh, Tarask, uh, for Tarask <laughs> death is temporary. Such a good split push talent, man. We should see it more. It only requires yeah. you to get to level 20. Yeah, it only requires you to get to level 20 without Maelstrom, the extra sustain you can get. Yeah, to have a useful alt. Basically right <laughs> up there with the Orbital BFG Hammer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Beautiful way of putting it. Right now we're seeing Polska, Pamienta, uh, Gabrick around the boss. They're not really looking to... Actually, it looks like they are looking to cap it, but they really shouldn't. They should back uh... up and leave this because here comes Tossers. Yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah, look at Falstead though, sneaking around, looking for an opportunity to gust. He's going this for be it. Beautiful. This would be beautiful right now. He's leaving it though. We're seeing Palsy take a lot of damage. Wolves has gone very deep, getting some good damage off onto Diablo. And Tix shreds through most of Gluehammer's health there. We're seeing a good Lightning Breath coming out. The Twilight Dream is dropped, gets a lot of damage onto the uh, Valor there. Tix gets tackled, drops as Dingo, keeps stuff alive, but is CC'd through most of it. He's just using it for an escape and gets gusted to freedom. Yeah, that's a nice version of ice. And basically, Tastingo, at the worst, it's an ice block that lasts for one second longer and allows you to reposition. You don't have yeah. to use it to stand still and right-click someone. But that was definitely a very good use of it. Of course, you will drop to 1 HP, unlike with my Ice Block, but it has a similar value as it. Are they going to find him? Uh, doesn't look like it. Mopsy should get out. He's able to be back pretty quickly. Uh, level 16 talents, though, are available for both teams. It's Lacerate. Coming in for Zul'jin, he wants that extra CC for his team so that they can chase people down easier. Titan Killer for Artanis because we have to kill Diablo somehow. Yeah, it's a good choice. Triple Strike Titan Killer can definitely help with that. Condemn comes out, a Root comes out, Glenn, nice and he's got the Speed Demon. Yeah, he runs right back into the Root though, takes a lot of damage, has to be ancestral to stay alive oh, here. Oh, hello! He what? him out! <laughs> he <laughs> escapes! The Flips use a Glue Hammer, he makes it back over the wall. Pulti Boss getting focused down. Here comes the Lightning Breath, doing huge damage. Mopsio in full retreat, ticks from below, doing huge damage to Glue Hammer, but now he's being focused by so many heroes. Diablo is taken out, Rip Souls, Pulti Boss is gone too. Diablo will respawn, Shickle. Oh! Makes it out on 99 health. <laughs> wow, Diablo did a lot of buttons there. <laughs> <laughs> he flipped around around the entomb. He went Boxio, into the please. entomb and flipped around. He's like, take me <laughs> instead. And he put his hands together. He's like, take uh, me. I love Joanna. <laughs> no, I don't care if we're on the opposite team. <laughs> she didn't mean it when she destroyed me. Uh, just because our love is forbidden doesn't mean I can't have it. <laughs> Diablo <laughs> was taken out. He's down to two souls. Oh, a disastrous it. time to have. That's two here. more souls than he deserves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's able to clear up minions, though. He's getting the lightning shield, helping him burst through this. Everyone is fully stacked on Season Marksman, except for Artanis, but he'll be there very soon. His uh, minion wave should spawn, and he should be able to get some from mid lane. How many does he need? Uh, Artanis. He's on 38, so a couple okay. more. Okay, about 12 more minions or so. Yeah, Get with the program Wolves and he can turn on his attack speed. It's not easy to kite with Artanis because of no mobility talents. When you stand still against someone, it's definitely appreciated to turn on that attack speed. But generally, yeah. it's just like sometimes you'll save yourself a little bit more with that shield burst if you get caught. 
indeed. A boss is scouted. No one going for that. Level 20 is available, even though that fight was brutally... Rosberg trying to bait the flip here by Moxio. The flip is landed. There's the root. Iron skin is dropped. He immediately goes into the backline. Ticks. Wades through. Gets in too, but he's still dropping that damage. The storm shield is very nice. In comes Falstad. Trying to focus down Kronos. Lightning breath. Dropping huge damage onto Wolves, who is dropping the Ancestral. Keeps Diablo alive. Now it is Ticks versus Gluehammer. Basically 1v1. Ticks is escaping. He did not pop Tazdingo here, but that was a 2 for 0 in favor of uh, Polska Pagnenza, and now they're going to be able to move up and get the boss. Now, Tetra, look at the gem count for the blue team here. Is there any reason that Tossers puts themselves in the middle of the minion waves meeting pre-level 20? Yeah, that was weird. That was weird. They were down. They had huge gem counts. They had a lot of XP. Uh, sorry, they had a lot of uh, minion waves. They could have got. They could have soaked bot easily enough. And I, uh, they I, weren't 20. I guess they were afraid of the boss. They felt if they positioned safely yeah. enough with Johanna in front and the rest behind. But of course, Johanna has been having a rough time here. But if they do that, maybe they can prevent the boss from being taken, which would represent a keep. So maybe it's just yeah. well done by Polska. Really good engage. There we go again with Diablo into a tomb. Johanna goes down right before level 20. Once again, it's a three man defense. Again, probably not the best place to be. Uh, Diablo is proving to be quite a fright. Yeah, but now pushing in with boss and all and all five members alive versus four. This is a disaster here for Tossers. In comes Diablo onto Malfurion. No <laughs> ice block. Tackles him through the boss. They could have killed him with that, but instead it's now all in on the boss. Ticks doing huge damage. They're able to take down Diablo. Nan Shiku, they're wiping him out, but the boss is still there. Tazdingo is probably standing the boss done. That is disastrous here, but Zhuf is full health. Down goes Porty. Boss gets taken they out. Defend. Can they, they kill Zhuf in time? Zhuf, you need to stand in the top. He's <laughs> dead. Uh, Grabby, what just happened? Uh, Did they just throw? Can a they delayed end? victory, I think. Can they not end? No. No, I don't think so. Tix has literally no health, but he does more damage, I guess. Oh, he's a troll. Situation. He doesn't need health. But it's true. What just They're happened going for it. is that Malf it got beautifully manipulated by... Okay, first Malf entangled Diablo. He gets Speed Demon. He goes for yeah. Malf, knocks him into the core. He gets swapped into the boss. And that should have been And then tackled it. out of the boss. <laughs> yeah, and then overpowered out of the boss, which was really bad. And then Diablo turned on Lightning Breath while on the boss, which they means he took splash damage from the core. They're going yep, for they it. They want to win. Leo is here. But Tick's they taking won't. a little bit of damage. Tix low. He's standing in tower. Tix, please. Tix. And he's dead. I, I don't know why that happened. Well, that he wanted to get away there. from Leoric's spawn. Yeah, and instead he got killed by a tower and then by Leoric anyway. Um, and it. Leoric dies, though. One for one. Wolves might probably die here, though. Here comes Dibbles. Doesn't get the stun. Shield is activated. Here comes Falstad trying to get shift from behind. Artanis does die. Gust is used to zone Ross Megan shift away from Kronaz, uh... who is just fleeing for this. They're looking to just kill Gluehammer here. Just like, <laughs> you really want to stay here and fight? But no. Oh, yeah, they are going to be the other way. That is a one for one. Diablo from above. Teleport over the Wolf Axe to the cleanse and the Bolts of the Storm away. Now it's just Ross Megan danger. Uh, Gluehammer should get that boomerang on living. No, they're making their getaway. They're still fl they're going all the way okay. back to court. It's a huge top lane push here. Roskmeg now in trouble. He does not have Iron Skin available. He will have it in seven seconds. Getting focused down. He will die. No! Indestructible. I forgot he had that. Getting healed. Huge amount of slow. He has Iron Skin. He drops it. And he lives, Grubby. Two EU core calls here. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this is intense. This is our first game of the Grand Finals. Yeah. Oh it's uh, five it's versus awesome. four now. Artanis is about to be coming back. Uh, the top lane is not too oh. stacked with catapults yet. And two misses here, crucially, as the yeah. last defense of the keep is being mounted here by Tossers. Now, with Artanis going back, they go back, they get the Bruiser Camp, which, by the way, was delayed. Pretty interesting. Yeah. They are able to get that, though. That's going to put a bit of pressure onto the mid lane. There's still a wall up there, so that will be delayed quite nicely. And catapults to help clear it. Best uh, situation, they were able to get a keep here. Uh, were tossers and as such keep themselves in the game 26 percent on that core lightning breath on that core is going to be very fun what oh, what does lightning breath do i think it takes off 40 percent of the shield maybe or not even i uh, definitely need a bit more help it's easy to look at that core and say oh 26 percent but actually the base yeah, core hp is, is like huge. 150 so which makes this one 75 so it's 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 down half not 75 percent when you count the shields yeah, shield very, very effective here. Look Shield's at this. Good. Positioning for traps right now. Neither team has anywhere near enough gems. It's going to take ages for them to soak up enough. It's very much down to just waiting for someone to get caught out. And Falstart could be the one that gets caught out, but for now he's pretty...
heads up with where everyone is. <laughs> just just standing walks these. in, just like, hey, how's it going? Did you Check see those two my pings? glorious golden chicken. Did you see those two pings? Yeah. Like, danger. On my <laughs> way. <laughs> Falstead, continue to push. Merkab will finally get picked off thanks to that lovely mirror ball. And that's going to prevent at least a little bit more danger. Top plane, just getting pressure to Wolves. He wants to live. Doesn't do it. Just getting some scouting information there. Uh, Mercab's still Bruce, the Siege Giant's actually still alive. That's uh, actually going to go all the way up to the fort, to the keep here. Uh, just suppression pass it. It will kill the giant. It yeah, will block it. It keeps dying. Just do Atatis. it. Atatis. Just Atatis, please. Do it. Pulse that's here. I've had this do something. No, nope, they want to fight. Oh, they're they going are doing for something. Broke. They're, they're going, going for trying to get Mopsio here. Mopsio trying to get anyone. He goes for Malfurion in the back line. The silence is dropped onto just Diablo here. Trying to burst him down. Titan Killer doing a huge amount of damage. Diablo gets a huge amount of health back thanks to the Lord of Terror. The Beam <laughs> doing great damage onto the uh, Rhaegar in the background. Li Ming does escape. Falstead has not arrived. He's trying to end the game and he does. Okay, so yeah, Falstead was just like, okay, sure. <laughs> I'll just end the game then. That's fine. I feel robbed. But why? I, I was, was really still looking fight. at the fight. <laughs> Same. I literally was just like, "Where's Falstad? Where's the Where's the gust? Oh, there he is. Oh, game's over. Me." <laughs> okay, so uh, the Zuljin continues the zero percent win rate in, <laughs> in HGC. <laughs> oh man, that was a good game. But well played. Good call. Falstad able to win the game for his team and bring it one zero in this best of three series uh, for Polska Pamienta. Oh, they should have suppression pulse the siege guy, man. They should have suppression pulse Artanis. Uh, sorry, yeah, Falstead. At least yeah. delayed time. Yeah. Man. All right, well, game number one. <laughs> go, go for the Polska. Well played. Uh, well played. Able to do it. And uh, <coughs> it's the best out of three, though. We still have, at l minimum, one more game to go. We have yet to cast a three-mapper. In, uh, in yes. this cup and the last one, so far there's always been a clear winner. I would say that this game, there was also a very clear winner, Falstad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Falstad did an insane job. Zul'jin was not terrible. I still think they should have taken Raider. Uh, I mean, let, let's take a look at Zul'jin. I'll, I'll, I'll switch back to the score here. Uh, the score okay. screen that is... Uh, let's see... We have Zul'jin at three deaths, 78,000 damage. Which is a lot. It's not bad. Uh, it's right under Li Ming. Same as Vala. She also has three deaths. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it was okay. The main problem was the uh, there was a lot of valid targets for Entomb, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Malfuron, no ice block. Johanna herself and it's not that Johanna went greedy she took indestructible imposing presence laws of hope regen master maybe reinforce could have helped but it's such a compelling regeneration globe map I don't know it's uh I think Zul'jin was okay would Raynor have done more I'm not sure uh every time Zul'jin got caught used Tastingo to save himself uh it was pretty impactful he kills someone soon after usually even in the last fight I know you were probably looking at Falstad. But, uh, no, I was looking at the fight. You were <laughs> that's, why the fight like, that's why I literally looked for Falstad in the fight and then realized the core was dying. Game number two, ladies and gentlemen, Cursed Hollow between Polska Pamienta and the Tossers. Currently 1-0 to Team Polska. And uh, also, you can follow Tetcher on Twitter, on at Tetcher, as you can see at the bottom. And myself, at follow Grubby. In case you want to communicate any feelings you had about this game, we can't look at Twitch chat. Uh, for most of this, actually, I wanted to say not all the time, but uh, it's quite different from a, a home a personal stream, stream yeah. as usual. So, yeah, if you want to let us know anything, maybe uh, just uh, let, let us know who you're cheering for, what you thought of some of the games, what you thought of the end of last game. Go ahead and let us know. Uh, for now, it's going to be an Artanis Ooh. ban, finally. Ooh, yeah, it's actually getting removed. Target bans always makes it fun, because we know that teams are considering each other's skills and Artanis was easily one of the reasons that Tossers were able to get most of their kills. It was beautifully done. Yeah. Uh, Wolves has been picking it. He's been playing it too well and he deserves this ban against him finally. Uh, even on Cursed <laughs> Hollow where it's not like oh wow that's an Artanis map but he's just been really solid on it. Rhaegar and Tyrael come out. 
also standard picks for Tosser so far. Yep, they've liked these a lot. Been very, very effective. Um, so ETC has been ETC by Furion would be beautiful here for the match, Lee. Yeah, classic three. Leaves you open to take anything else later. They could also say, okay, we're not going to go for classic. We're going to take a bit more dedicated approach. Go for something like the Haka or Falstad. Or both. Both would be unusual, but it's possible. Yeah. How has the Haka not been picked that much this uh, this entire tournament? Has it been picked at all? Tiny nerf, Tetcher. Just a tiny nerf, but it doesn't constitute a uh, omission from drafts. Yeah. Weird. Well, we'll see if it does come up. Here's Malfurion, and there he is! Coming into the Grand Finals, De Haka no, by very good. There we go. Now, that does mean that there is space in Polska's lineup for something like a mage or a melee assassin and a main tank as well. This could be on the minds of tossers as they make their next ban. Yeah. Uh, um, main tank ban... Any kind of range, any kind of extra range damage, they don't have their own. Yep, tank is probably most solid for them. Diablo is going to be potentially devastating. They also got uh, slightly roasted uh, in the last game by Diablo. Yeah. Diablo had his good cool and bad it. moments, maybe two or three funny mechanical fail swaps. Yeah. But for the most part, a very solid damaging front line. And basically the key to all of Johanna's deaths. Yeah, and Medivh being banned out as well. We've seen him on and off. Teams have been able to use him to insane effect, but this is very much a target ban against Tix, who was mental on the first Medivh game we saw him. Just absolutely bullied everyone, even before he got stacked. Yeah, exactly. So they've definitely been watching each other, or they know each other through other sources. Nice! Anubarak and Li Ming's counter. Uh, you know, Anubarak is Li Ming's counter, so they take that away. They take it themselves. Uh, magic damage is Tyke's minigun, and I no speak like Yoda, do I? And Anubarak <laughs> can counter that pretty well with Damp and Magic. Yeah, I like it. Very, very clever here. And uh, I would like to point out that when uh, Polska ran Sonya, it was Anubarak, Zarya, and Sonya. Mm. But they had Tychus on their team, so oh, yeah. Tyreal does fit in uh, in the same way that uh, Zarya would in that kind of composition. Could work. But uh, once again, this isn't Infernal Shrines. I think you don't Bad want times. a mage anymore, per se, here. It's going to do so little to, to Anubarak. True. Tyrael's also going to be able to just keep shields fairly constantly. You want someone who's going to be able to uh, to burn through him. Tyke's already there. Pretty effective. Some more CC. Maybe, maybe try to prevent Anub. Go also, it'd be nice. Go Global's full map control. Fun. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. The triple tank. They really like it. Polska have shown before that, they ver that they're slightly allergic to range. <laughs> Yeah, Triple Warrior, Malph, and Tychus. It's a good draft. Nice. Gives them a lot of control. Double uh, Split Soakers as well in the stage side for ETC and uh, the Haka. But I think against this comp, probably it's more Spit. Uh, yeah, even it though it's Anubarak. Anubarak has double stuns, yeah, there's the mean... Displacement, there's Reign of Vengeance. No, it's going to be stage dive. Yeah. Unless you want to, uh, just to, unless you want to commit. <laughs> it yeah. still inspires fear. You can always get that five man marsh. Every time. Trust me, guys. I got this. I'm a good ATC. So there we go. <laughs> yeah. Final, final pick. Going to be Valor on the side of Tossers. So, decent damage there. She, I think Valor would be to a miss to take Manticore here. Or whatever. Uh, what the talent is called now. The percentage damage one. I think it's uh, Manticore. Yeah, Manticore. At yeah. level 16. I would, I would to a miss for that. Yeah, I think uh, full auto attack build is probably the best here, in fact. It is... Let's see, at 4 you get the attack speed and bonus damage, if you stack it. And then at 7 you get Death Dealer, resets. You don't necessarily have a lot of value in that, except uh, when the fights devolve and get chaotic. But it's the level <laughs> 20 that just makes her mad. Tempered yeah. by Discipline, healing 13, 16 crits. And then at 20 you can go for Far Flight to be safe against Power Slide. Or you just go full YOLO, get Ranker, and get massive <laughs> self-healing and damage. And it's pretty crazy. Yeah, we'll keep an eye out, see if that's what she goes for. She's starting with Hot Pursuit, though, on the right-hand side. And she's being played by Shift here. Tix on Li Ming, Roskmeg on the Tyrael here, Kronaz on Rhaegar, and it's Wolves on the Anubarak with the Master Skin. 
And on the left, Potipos de Haka for uh, Polska Pamienta, Pop Mopsio on ETC, Rizaf on Malfurion, Sihu on Zarya, and Gluhammer on Tychus. And we see a five man push with Righteousness Tyrael Shields. Gonna take down that tower in short order. Yeah, some lovely shields from Tyrael, and also the little beetles tanking a couple shots here and there coming in by Wolves. They should get both here, but there's a counter push in the bot lane. One tower down. They're probably going to get the second thanks to the tanking of Sheikul. So, base race. Let's go. All let's in. go for the fort. <laughs> let's just do it. Yeah, let's go for core. We can do this, right? They we are... Damage with damage. Yeah, just go for the core. Can they just yeah. go around the fort and take the mid-keep tower? It gives a lot of XP. True. They could do that. They could also just go for the slightly forward tower here and retreat into the uh, watchtower area. Grab that on the way out. Rhaegar has come down to the bot lane to not defend. He's sort of just a passive observer here. What and is that? Get Why would down. you buy it? a huge amount of damage and he's, he might die. Why would you buy it? How can she buy Whoa! Did you see Did the it? ragdoll? I saw it. Strings yeah, that was cool. It. This game has the best ragdolls. Cronus goes down. He is first blood here. And uh, mid fort's dead. As is bot fort. Uh, to be honest, you can't buy it. You were saying to not fight. He, Rhaegar came down not to defend. You were right. He should not have had uh, yeah. the will to defend. He should just stand there. And uh, wait till minions die to forts, and just say until here no further, but not but. Yep. Maybe drop a totem yeah. with a lightning shield on it, tiny bit of damage, but exactly. I don't know. Either way, both teams managing to take down two towers, a fountain, and a fo sorry, three towers, a fountain, and a fort. Okay. At the one minute mark. <laughs> At one minute 40. The hacker goes for Lurker Strain, emerging from Burrow, grants oh. stealth, and does a 30% knockback. It is okay at level 4, you can now manually interrupt the Haka's burrow. It gets even better at level 16 with the uh, tunneling claws, the burrow movement, which actually allows yeah. you to control when to burst out and slow people. And where? Yeah, you can position yourself behind them and knock them back into your team. It's like an extra face melt here. Speaking of ETC, he's gone for Crowd Surfer. So a lot of mobility and uh, just interesting engagement potential here for Polska. Obsio has decided that he wants to 1v4. His team is arriving, but Wolves is trying to zone them out. Obsio is Obsio's going all the way. Here's the Haka. Kronas? Yep, he's okay. That happened. He's okay. He's 0-2. Yeah. Well, all right then. Uh, Holy Ground, of course, is uh, very strong against ETC, and Crowdsurfer helps with that. That's a pretty compelling reason to take it against Tyrael. Very true. Speaking of Tyrell, he's easily able to get the uh, first tribute as it spawned miles away. And the Siege Cat will get killed off very quickly by Wolves. But uh, a funky start to the game, to <coughs> yeah. say the least. Yeah, it's kind of a Battlefield of Eternity type of start where it's like, oh, we're on opposite sides of the map and we've got four people against one. We've got to go for it now. Let's kill the Taras, let's kill the fort. We can't really turn around because we're already here and that's what happened this game. This is so weird. 3 minutes, 11 seconds. There's nothing left in the middle or the bottom. Yeah, both teams have just lost everything. Uh, however, this does work out. If we have to make the call, This uh, the bottom fort dying is far more important for Polska than the mid fort d uh, dying. Because the bottom lane is where their side bosses. So that's going to be going straight onto tier 2s. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. That's definitely true. The top lane is the most important blue defensive lane and uh, red for the bottom. So when it comes to that, good choice for Polska Pimienta. Next tribute comes. Good location for Tassers. They needed that because they're a few seconds away from level 7. Uh, yep, Siege Camp will be pushing at the very perfect time. Nicely timed for Polska. Yep, that will be moving straight into this top lane to keep some pressure on. Everyone's closing in. ETC is a very long way away though. Kronos needs to leave. Okay, Kronos dead again. Uh... Oh, no. Get to, nope. Yeah, Wolves were not able to save him there. Uh, that's uh, three Kronaz deaths uh, out of three yeah. for his entire team here. Crossbreak will escape here, and the objective will be picked up by Polska Pamienta. We're being critical, but I think it's justified. It doesn't mean he's a bad player. He's been playing great. Mm. Uh, but this is not his best so far, as he's playing the role of Warrior as he is Rhaegar support. Uh, normally, you'll have a Warrior anchoring that popular entry point. And uh, yeah. Rhaegar just he got caught by uh, Dragitung, Poti Boss. Yeah, and Wolves not getting the knock-up onto Poti, who was able to get that burrow, get himself easily out of dodge. Siege Giants going to be killed off before they get any fort damage, but overall, Polska in great shape in this game. Mopsio could be moving himself down to the bot lane to put pressure on it because he's kind of a jerk like that and just wants to ruin <laughs> their day. It's just like, oh, we actually have to defend our fort at five minutes. This sucks. Yep.
Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll keep it five minutes. Yeah, I'll keep a wall. Uh, pretty big <laughs> red wave here. Echo Pedal will help with that wave clear. Such a good talent for ETC. And uh, we're on the way to level 10. And the good thing for Pulse Guy is, considering they're 1 1 and a level up, it means that they'll probably get the curse almost guaranteed. Thank you for the B steps, Grant. Uh, <laughs> It uh, <laughs> because the next tribute comes when they're level 10, and after that, yeah. I think the 10 will defend uh, tossers from getting their own 10. We'll have to wait and see if that's true. This could be the best chance for tossers yet, as 10 they're not gonna do it. 10's gonna there be yet? here, like you said, they'll get it. That's yeah. the thing because uh, the hack is still soaking the top lane. ETC can move into another lane as well, especially if it's gonna take stage dive. They're easily gonna be able to soak 10 uh, miles before it's ever gonna be available. Uh, for tossers here, and as such, they're just going to position a Nubrak to get a little bit of a delay, That's just good. so they have time to continue soaking to get their level 10. The more times they interrupt that, the more likely they are to be 10 for the next tribute. I guess they will be. Yeah. And uh, right now, we're seeing Moptio taking out the boss. They're going straight for it because they have 10. It doesn't How are you going to contest against it? They're easily going to get it. They need to try, though, I think. They well, Rush Mech seems to agree. He's gonna scout. He's, uh, very, he's leaving it very late, but his team's nowhere near going the right way. They said they're gonna try and grab their own boss, and that's risky. And yeah, it's very late. Um, uh, basically, yeah. for about 40 seconds, they knew that the tribute is in this alcove here. From that moment onwards, I was looking to see if Tossus will do a boss call, as there were no tools for Pimienta yet to stop them. Now with stage yeah. dive available, I don't Haka think they can. Leashed. The hacker's going to keep it leashed. They're going to contest it. ETC has stage dive. Remember, he can rejoin this. And they're going to try to steal the boss. They are very thankful to Tossers for starting it for them. Zarya standing in the root, getting her energy up to full here, doing huge damage. But in comes Tyrael. The silence is good here, getting both heroes in expulsion zone. But the Bloodlust are immediately grabbing Malfurion. And ETC is nowhere to be seen. It's a massacre here. Three for zero. Four okay. for zero. And Laser finally get killed off. The hunter becomes the hunted. As yeah. they take the boss and say, thank you, we'll finish that. And I zoomed out mm -hmm. and you could see the way the Tossers was positioning. And it was just incredible. They came from three sides, used Bloodlust and just smashed Polska. Absolutely. They do need to send someone to the tribute here. Wow, they... Yeah, they can't actually do boss. <laughs> they don't have enough matter and health. They had to back up and go we for the tribute enough... instead of the boss. We don't have enough points. Mopsio is in good know. position to delay this at least once, but Wolves, ooh, nice knockback there, Mopsio needs to back out here, he can maybe get one more delay if he wades through Zhuf with extra range, oh. yes he can, Alun's Grace, lovely talent. Oh my golly, they're coming back here with full life, Expulsion Zone, stage dive is available, uh, more heroics on the side of Tossers, they still have Sanctification and Raid of Vengeance. Yeah, Adaptation not available, neither is the Dracon Laser Drill or the Twilight Dream for Polska Pamienta here. But they are, do have an obscene amount of harassment. Yep, they are not going to let uh, Tossers get this tribute. And I'm looking at uh, Tyrion and Nubrak's mana pool. Fast forward 20 seconds and they're going to be in a big trouble to do anything relevant. Yeah. Rosmac basically has a single spell until he's got to use Sanctification. Yeah. The issue I'm having with this is right now, mid lane and top lane are both pushing. Uh, for tosses here. ETC is actually doing the perfect thing though. And he is soaking it and is going to be able to de-push it. So... As long as his team can delay it, actually, no, they're just going to cap four versus oh. five or four versus four because Terry will be Rizuf back. Rizuf cancelled his own acquisition of the tribute. Yeah, the hungry arrow stage missed. dive. He can rejoin whenever he needs to. The hacker trying to help out here. He's trying to get to the backline onto Lee Ming. The burrow was used. Once he came in with the stage dive, he's got Rhaegar. But the sanctification will keep Rhaegar alive. Rain of Vengeance is good. Immediately kills off Zarya and Shift is pushing forward. Trying to get Mopsio will easily get that Pony boss too. And Shift shreds the team. Jiminy Jenniker statue. <laughs> My god, Robin. <laughs> they've, they've, everyone's dead. They've killed it all. <laughs> yeah. This fight is over. Bloodless. Pretty strong. And maybe the third boss attempt now? Uh, <laughs> round three. They're going for it. They have full Fight. health this time. <coughs> they do have mana. Robsmeg going to be tanking for his team. Shift arriving. And uh, they are now going to have a boss. But the thing is, it won't be pushing with a curse. They're not going to be able to get that lucky because this tribute only got them up to two. So they're prepared for just consistent pushing for a while, which is going to hopefully get them at level 13. Okay, finally, third time's the charm. Tossers gets the boss, and we're in a situation where we can start to believe in the equalizer here. As Tossers, despite being down, are getting a really good game here. And just looking at the fight, what Bloodlust is doing here against this triple warrior team, there's not enough dissuasion to... There's not enough disengage against that uh, Bloodlust, actually. It's yeah, just, ETC didn't even take uh, the extra range. Yeah. 
He's, he's, he's so worried about the level 16 Holy Grant that he doesn't have the face mount. Yeah, this is, this is interesting. Even Expulsion Zone going to be a bit of an issue. Right now, Boss with all five heroes pushing in the top lane. Stage Dive comes in, but Wolves already disengaging. They're trying to focus him down. Cleanse is already used. Wolves with shielding. Trying to stay alive. Gets pulled back in, but did alert, denied the tongue there. And the knock-up. Wolf survives, and the curse is grabbed by Tyrael from below. Disengaged Bloodlust was effective to finally save an Urarak. Curse happens. There's a big minion wave mid, and that one is going to immediately crush its opposition, which has been reduced to 1 HP when it does arrive. They're still pushing with yep. the boss. Engaged by a Nubarak. Boss is dead, though. Wolves trying to get anything. Sanification is dropped very nicely, but Ulti is able to get through. Facts to the Dark Swarm, but immediately ETC getting taken down here. Now, Furion is delaying the inevitable and is wiped off the map. <coughs> no boss to push with this, but it is cursed, so they can't just wade through this. Very nice play here by uh, the Tossers. It looks like they may be able to do it. Minion Wave mid is pretty big. It gets a tower, it gets the gate. They're going to go for the keep. And what is there really to stop them? There is Tychus. He turns on the minigun. It's guns are blazing. But it's not as good on Tyrael as on others. There's that imposing will to have to worry about. To reduce the attack speed. The fact that he doesn't have that big of a health pool. The fact that some of his survivability is shields. Makes Tyrael one of the perfect counters to Tychus. Normally, you see yeah. a warrior drop to 40% instantly. Tyrael, he stayed at 85. Really intense series between these two. This game started, like I said, with a lot of shenanigans, with two forts going down before the two-minute mark, and now it's just turned into pure chaos. But finally, Tossers beginning to stretch ahead with a lead. They're approaching level 16 now, and that's going to give them a huge advantage in terms of map control. Yeah, they're setting up for the second boss here. This is uh, not just an important boss to take, but also an important one to take away to protect their own keep. They're up in talents, and ETC is top, the Haka is mid. They need to start something aggressive here, Tossers, in order to force the global usage, because their advantage is rapidly deteriorating. Yeah, they're able to grab the Bruiser Camp. That's going to put a little bit of pressure on. But like you said, the double XP lane soak facts of the two global heroes is going to make it a little bit more difficult. We have a quick pause, but right now, everyone from Tossers grouped around this boss, looking for an opportunity, see if they can take it. And again, oh, we are. Is that the <laughs> Swedish right. counting system? Uh, I thought we have count to one twice. Uh, but right now, they're going for the boss. Remember, Holy Ground is available as the expulsion zone. ETC could stage dive in here, but that boss is going very quick. If he is doing it, he's left it far too late. Boss goes over to Tossers. Okay, they get the boss. Starting, going to be able to push in here. Level 16, crucially, is still missing. Polska, I would I would give them less than 11% chance to win this game. It wouldn't yeah, be a that miracle. They're looking rough, which means we may have our uh, first game at number three of the entire day, Grubby. Yeah. Apparently tied tournament. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see. Boss pushing in very aggressively. No follow-up Siege Giant Cap to help it out, but Drag does not land by Porty. Not able to get a cheeky kill there. Rosbeck with a lovely Holy Ground zoning out. Drag and Laser Drill focusing down the boss. Getting some extra damage. In comes Rosbeck with the Holy Ground completely trapping Glue Hammer. And him and Shickle are wiped off the map. Super easy. And Poti Boss surrounded by enemies. He's going to borrow by his team some time. Here comes Stage Dive into the boss stun. <laughs> he gets wiped out. And that is going to be GG Grubby. And game number two. Going to go over to the Tossers. We're going to go to a game number three. Very nicely played there by the Tossers. They've done it. And uh, I may say a little bit of respect to Kronas, who despite having a number of uh, unforced errors in the early game, was able to rally and stop the uh, the amount of deaths that he accrued per minute and came back here and uh, played really solid in the follow-up. Didn't yep. die again. And uh, yeah, but the Tossers took it. Very well done by them. 1-1. And we have a decider match, a tiebreaker to decide who is going to take this cup number two here in HTC Europe Open Division. Excited to see. And that means potentially we have a third chance for Infernal Shrines, a second chance to see Sonya today. Oh, nice. I'd like that. Infernal Shrines. Oh, yeah, what a great map to see. decide it on. Um, we have a lobby. Keep it's Infernal Shrines! Oh, yes. Nice. <laughs> You That's don't want, want to time. go up against Tychus when you go for Sonya. Yes. And they love Triple Warrior style, so it makes sense. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's uh, very focused on their own style of play. Tyrael, first ban though, leaving the Tychus open. They could have first pick it, maybe? We will see. Tyrael, also a very decent uh, comp, a very decent counter to Sonya, too. It's like, oh, you're going to spin, we're just going to sank, and you're going to get no healing. 
All right, what do we have? I would say Tychus first pick. If they're going down that route, and also, like you said, they don't like playing against Tychus, they're probably going to first pick it. There it is. It's about time. Okay, there we go. Uh, this basically allows them to repeat performance what they have been doing for many of their games. Now, what was breath. the key to Fallen counter Triple Warrior last game? They had Tyrael and Nubarak. Um... Valor, who didn't go for a percentage damage build, she went for multi shot. And Bloodlust. Yes. Right? yes you it take was. the lesser burst damage of Warriors, you out heal it with Bloodlust, and you've got a pretty solid f team fight every time. Mm. Going against Warriors with a lack of self sustain, with a lack of support, Hello. is usually why you lose. My and and, and oh, taking yeah. taking crowd control like a Nubarak, heroes that have low HP but big utility, and then going for uh, good support for the whole team is generally how you beat Warriors. It's not even only about the percentage based damage. And I think that Tossers understands this really well. They're repeating the same ingredients they figured Polska out, and they're going to win this game. Congrats, Tossers. Ooh. Well, <laughs> the call has been made, but so far, Sonya, 100% win rate. See <laughs> yeah, if that's true. able to turn it round. Whatever you do, don't take Zuljin. He's 0%. <laughs> this is true. <coughs> Throughout the entirety of EU. Uh, but Sonya getting locked in pretty early. Diablo banned out, as is Valor. Diablo, lovely on the shrines, and combined with Sonya, basically gives you so much AoE damage. Uh, and also, someone mentioning... Uh, Arthas, in fact, has 15 physical armor, not 10 armor, but who does have 10 armor? Uther has 10 armor. Right. So it is Uther and Greymane, two of the most popular heroes in the game with 10 armor. We have also Matt the least popular. Yeah, they're the least and most popular heroes in the game with 10 armor. Because they're the only ones! <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, uh, how? Uh, lots of lockdown. Dealing with a Sonya here, Johanna I don't think would be too bad. Get that little mini stun with low cooldown. Especially if you take the cooldown reduction talent for Condemn. So you can just spam it out and interrupt the uh, whirlwind as much as possible. People haven't been getting that right now. Tannis. Oh yes, of course, our Tannis got Oh yes, last they game. have that available and oh, Kale Pass. Burned Flesh, Chain Bomb, you like grouping up in the front. You like to get mm -hmm. Zarya and another tank. Yeah, Kale Thus, I yeah. like it. So standard uh, Polska Panienta style here would be to take two more tanks. Zarya and ETC um, would be standard for them now. Yeah, I'd say ETC would be good. Johanna I don't think I'd feel too bad about, but ETC I prefer. But they're, they're taking the time. They are considering here. Johanna's decent against Rhaegar or Tannis, yeah. not they as could. good against I've just realised, if they did take Johanna... They could go for the old-fashioned... It's murdered. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, if they had taken Johanna, they could have gone for the old-fashioned Falling Sword Leap comp. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, the Chinese been around for ages. This. Exactly. Would have been fun, but apparently not. It is good against Kael'thas. I doubt it. It uh, is good against exactly. Kael'thas. Exactly. Oh, but only Kael'thas. <laughs> we'll yeah. just load him up and that's it. And then good luck, Tychus, with Artanis and Uberak. Because you can't follow. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. You get one kill every fight, and that's it. Uh, so now, final pick for Tossers here. Uh, some kind of... Even more CC would be lovely. Like, right now, everyone on their team has some kind of CC, even if it's just a slow in the form of Rhaegar. I don't think you go Leo here. He doesn't perform mm, well no. against either Sonya or Tychus. And definitely not Zarya. He could combine well with Kael'thas, though. True. The lovely uh, the easy bake oven. But he's bad against everything else. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, definitely think an extra damage dealer. Um, no. Auto attacker, maybe. Valor still. Valor's banned. gone. Yeah. That's acceptable. I that somehow so stuck through. So do I. <laughs> 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 That's still here. But they were <coughs> rag against them last time they ran Sonya, and they ran through it. Yeah, true. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. Rag gets Interesting. resilient flame at 13, gives him 50% uh, armor against everything after he gets stunned. There's Sonya Spear and Merlin's yeah. Bolt. And yes, extra, he also can get extra armor at level uh, level 4 with Catching Fire. Uh, really? Yes, uh, if you complete, if you finish the stack, it becomes an active. You get the extra health regen and it's an activatable, which gives you armor. How much? A quarter? Uh, 15, I think. Oh, I that's why people take that shitty talent. <laughs> I... <laughs> it is a talent to take the pick. No. I, oh, okay. I thought it was just regen. 
No, it's regen and armor. Let me double check the amount for you. Oh, that's why they take it. Okay, I get it now. Okay, talents. Uh, for uh, 50, after gathering 15 regen globes, you can activate uh, to gain resistance for 3 seconds, reducing damage taken by 25%. 25? Oh, that's yeah, crazy. Armor. Of course. Okay, I'm going to take it too. <laughs> Double armor. I yeah. mean, me Meteor Ward is cool. It gives you spell block charges too, to the order of 50%. But a full mm -hmm. duration, non-specific amount of source, 25% damage reduction is much better. Anyway, on the left side here, Polska Pimienta. It's 1-1. One, one. And... Uh, we're still live, right? Yes, we are. As far as Excellent. I know. Excellent. Uh, my clean feed went down for a second. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, Bosco Pimienta, 1 1. It's Potiboss, Ruzaf, Mopsio, Gluehammer, and Sihu. And on the right side, in the red, Tossers. It's Wolves, Ticks, Kronas, Shift, and Roskmag. Ooh. Are rolling Roskmag. I like it. Mopsio giving a tiny bit of energy over to Potiboss, who has started off with the Demolitions Expert. Very standard here. And a perfect storm for the Muradin. He needs them stacks, yo. In fact, stacks for pretty much everyone. Season Marksman, the con uh, the convection here by Kael'thas. Shickle is beginning to wade through here. Uh, Shickle has actually taken shot of Fury, flip onto Mopsio. He leaps into a flame strike, takes huge damage. He's still alive. Oh, He's man. making it out of here. He gets shielded. By Zarya is trying to turn it around and bait in wolves, but everyone somehow lives. Okay, four man rotation goes on here to the bottom. Uh, nice stacks there on uh, Kael'thas's convection. Getting a few he, hits. He currently has two out of 20. Oh, oh my god, that flip onto Malfurion, who is uh, doomed with a capital D, gets knocked up and finished off by Kronaz. And uh, up to Zarya to clear this minion wave. Takes a nice bit of damage from it, though, getting some energy. But yeah, nice swap. I TT Tours moment it, so I didn't see it. I was looking <laughs> at the top lane. <laughs> top lane, this is very familiar. This is almost the exact light, uh, <coughs> lane setup that we had in the first game that we cast, which yeah. had a Sonya in it. And Tick's actually missing the uh, minion kill there, so missing the stack on his Sulfurous Hungers, which is the standard build nowadays, the uh, Empower Sulfurous build. So Sonya actually wins this lane. It's the second time that Siku has won the lane against Ragnaros. I say won because Rag already yeah. tapped. Sonya also wins most lanes, it seems. Spear misses, though. Takes a lot of tower damage. Nicely micro by Tix there. Yeah, well done. Yeah, but I mentioned the talent here. Shot of Fury is the starting... Oh, Green Mafia ended again. Yep, another uh, swap by uh, Wolves into uh, Gravity Labs and Paling. Yeah. Yeah, everything basically. But, uh, I mentioned Shot of Fury. Whirlwind is definitely one of the more uh, is the most expensive fu uh, talent in terms of Fury that you have on Sonya. So if you don't have to block uh, specific auto attackers, then you can. Oh, we're probably going to get a pause. There we go. Some crazy work. Looks like we're good. Speaking okay, where good, were we? Uh, well, we can see that the uh, tossers were very much winning the objective. And right. there's absolutely nothing that uh, Polska could do about it except, except try to this. go for kills. <laughs> except well, no, try Kale's to push them out, this. get kills, and uh, take it back from them. Yeah, well, they're going to try it, but Kale has arrived. Yeah, they're just going to ditch it. No, you're right. I mean, uh, even when worse comes to worse, uh, Rack can just go to the fort and snipe the final kills. Yeah, they're able to grab that pretty nicely. Rag clearing up the mid lane. He can then rotate back to top lane if he wants to to match up against Sonya, who has already made her way back up there to continue doing Sonya things while the Punisher makes it over the wall. No flips happening yet. Ragnaros goes stop to get it with Sonya. Get some of that experience. Siku, a bit of damage. Nice self sustain with that whirlwind. In the meantime, Punisher is about to be winding down its usefulness. But the cool yes. thing about Anubarak, even if there wasn't a single minion here, the consistent beetles that come out will tank tower shots to take priority. That means they don't get slowed. So Anubarak is a really good specialist warrior, a good pusher. Which is why Zagara and uh, Anubarak love each other so much. It's true, they combo very well together. Rosmik is going to have to go back though as he's low on mana. Once again, going for his standard all the damage build that he's been going for a lot of the games he has played this Anubarak. Uh, Catching fire. On Ragnaros, slowly stack it up, but he really doesn't want to fight too much because Shiku will beat him. Uh, so as such, he's playing very far back, very safely, and can't actually get to that globe, at least in this scenario, to continue to stack that as easily as he would like to. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Burnt Flesh worries. coming out. Very useful on these uh, heavy warrior lineups. 
Kel'Thas can take Fury of the Sun well at level 16, where he gets double flame strikes. So strong on controlling the objectives. I'm glad yep. that Kel'Thas is back, and I'm also glad the position he's taking, where he's not insta-pick, he's not first pick, he is a pick. And that's where Kel'Thas always should have been, but where he wasn't for about a year. Agreed. Uh, and uh, to be clear, this is not an excuse, Hero League players, to pick Kale first, and it's definitely not an excuse to pick Pirate last. Yes. Thank you. Especially against Zarya. Thank you. Public service announcement at an end. <laughs> do not Pyroblast. Yeah, do not Pyroblast the Medivh. Do not Pyroblast the Zarya. Do not Pyroblast just... against Uther. In fact, it would yeah. probably be better if you just mostly focus on Phoenixing. Thank you. Yeah, Phoenix is quite lovely. We like it. It's pretty. You are useful when you do this. Please be useful. <laughs> but this has been a public service announcement from your Open League card. <laughs> Paid for by Diamond Players. <laughs> 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 Paid for by the by the games of many many people who lost in weekends <laughs> and uh, at Diamond and below and at Master and Grandmaster for that matter. Yeah, it's all it's everywhere. Yeah. It's always spread. So we're gonna see right now a slight head start coming in here for Tossers. They're able to get in there a bit in advance, and with Rhaegar on the way, uh, he does have the lightning bonds, but it's not really with his team to use it yet. Topsio, uh, oh, good positioning. We see uh, Tix considering taking the uh, fort, and he does. There we go with those spells. Yeah. Uh, this is the range of his abilities. I know that seems crazy, but it's true. So is it still crazy then? Uh, definitely helps on the ske skeletons. Now what uh, Posca can do, they can try to pull the skeletons back. You know, if they yeah. don't engage, hold that thought. It's fine for them. They actually get Artanis. Yeah, they're able to get Artanis here. Uh, now Ragnaros is out of that fort mode. Very good timing by them with that kill. Mopsio can be able to get out of here. A little bit low on mana. But Trickle now continuing to get standard Sonya value by spinning. But the objective is still currently ahead for Tossers here. But they're slowly getting zoned away. Uh, Kale is still here though. But Mopsio with some great zoning. 22 versus 33. Ragnaros. No, I think they got this on lockdown. I mean, level 10 is so close for Tossers. But they are unable to steal it back. 36, 34. Mopsio goes down. Yeah, Brag sure. trying to steal it, but it does go over. So Furious Tigers walks into it. There's the Bloodlust. They want kills and they run into a root and don't get anything. The Bloodlust. Oh, actually, up. maybe. No, great engage with the oh, Shingle there. He is, he is flipped. Whirlwind up is up, but he doesn't have enough Fury to use it. Oh. And as such, gets taken out. Now, that is the best way to lose a Punisher. It's completely fine. In fact, if they mm -hmm. don't go inside the gate and pull it in, it will pretty much just don't do much. Mm. Didn't do anything really there. They oh. took a little bit of ammo, a little bit of damage thanks to the Sentinels on the towers. Very nicely done. Wolf's is such a good Artanis. Uh, he hits over 80% of his swaps, I think. I think Confirming so, yeah. kill after kill. The fact that they got level 10 tossers, even as they lost the objective, completely mm -hmm. fine. It allowed them to defend the fort. And they got they got Mopsio. Yeah, went really well. Though. How do you they, not uh... take crowd control on Infernal Shrines, man? Yeah, that is weird. It's just gone for a uh, Thunderburn and Iron Forge for Momentum. It is just better. Yeah, it's it's very strange. Very strange indeed. But Mopsio, he's not going for it this time, so we can't question him. And, uh, oh, hey, look, Phoenix. Can't we? Well, no, we, ca we can. <laughs> not not <laughs> a great <laughs> idea. Yeah. He's better than us. Yeah, or that's true. Better than me. Feels bad. <laughs> oh, he's better than me. Don't worry. <laughs> but don't have uh, everything. Maybe. Sorry? Not to add to everything. No, this is true. Everyone has something they're good at. Yeah. We're probably better at casting And I'll him. find mine eventually. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably better at casting than him. I don't know. I haven't heard of cast in Polish. This is true. We don't know. Faulty drops a shield, protects himself, gets cleansed, trying to retreat out of here. Good blind coming in here. And they're able to escape. A lot of heroics burnt there. In fact, only two heroics burnt there. Uh, the Explosion Zone and the Suppression Pulse. So both teams not able to get anything. About 20% of each respective team's heroics just got used. Very true. Very Whoa, true. They actually have very similar cooldowns. Yeah, very short cooldowns. Rosmak uh, kind of just walked into it, but he's an Uberak. He still gets unstoppable. Uh, he doesn't get the invulnerability anymore when he uh, bro charges. They remove that from him, but still unstoppable. That means when he's in trouble, as long as he presses bro charge before stuns literally hit him, he will disjoint everything. And he'll yep. be fine. Yeah, and he will survive this. Towers also survive. He's going to start clearing this up. Demolitions expert starting to actually demolitionize. And Shickle starting to clear up, but denied. We're seeing a lot of steals by Kale Pass. 
Back to Rust setting up for the fourth again. Kelta's playing exceedingly safe. Uh, his stacks is only halfway done. Yeah, Mopsio in a great position to try and catch Shift. Like right now, when he moves forward to try and get some extra shots here. But Shift gonna deny any kind of aggression onto him. And now Mopsio is very far away from his team. And he's gonna slowly creep back towards it. Blue Hammer dropping some good damage. Ragnaros has now expired. That Molten Core, 28 to 15. Thanks to Rag there. Sickle though, will have Whirlwind available. He's gonna be able to walk back in there. Expulsion Zone used on Wolves. And they're just gonna let it go. You can't compete with this. Phoenix, Ragnaros' trade, Flame Strike, and Chain Bomb. Tossers has so much shrine control. I'm really loving the draft here. Some of my favorite characters in the game too. Anubra, Cortana, Skelthos, Ragnaros. So cool to see them working together here. And it does seem like Tossers kind of solved the riddle. That is, how do we beat this Zarya triple warrior camp? Sonya, so far, 100% win rate. But it looks like we can get some massive value here from Tossers. Could also be the first fight where Bloodlust gets some massive value. The Punisher's full HP. This could be a keep. It could be more. Bloodlust comes out. Good cleanse, Mopsio able to escape here and the root preventing any follow-up, but with that bloodlust, that keep is forfeit. The Punisher's not actually tanking it right now, Expulsion Zone will delay this, and Krona's actually slightly bit out of position, in comes Shiko, dropping that wrap of the Berserker, he moves in, gets some good damage, Kael'thas gets a massive flip, Twilight Dream is good, and it's a massacre right now, we're seeing Tix sustaining through, but Shiko doing what Sonya does best, he starts to run out of health, he does go down, the healing over time from Shuf, not enough, the Punisher's still here, it could actually what? jump on someone here, and it does, the double stun, the Punisher's John still 60% life, Hammer gets flipped, they want to try and get him, and they might actually, he's sustaining very well with that's the stuff, but finally goes down, and the keep is taken in a three for one in terms of kills. Incredibly impressive by Tassus. The way that Kronos got away and then went back in for the damage, even if he was only 20% life. Impressive by the Punisher to stay alive for as long as he did. 60% <laughs> life as that fight went on. A very cool fight there, uh, in which Tassus came out ahead. Yeah, that was. That was, that was very interesting. They were able to CC Sonya a lot through that. Like, even with, uh, she wasn't able to spin for as long as she wanted to. And as such, the healing from Malfurion wasn't enough to keep her upright. She was taken out. And otherwise, that could have been a very different fight because everyone was so low on the side of tosses. They were so low. Nice epitaph. Yeah. All right. Um, sea Giant, uh, not Sea Giant, sorry, Impalers and Fallen taken uh, uh, by Polska and Tossers respectively. Now Polska, moving into Chinese bush meta. Car, let's see who falls for it. If it's a Nubarak, he'll probably be fine. Uh, yeah. Look at the map. It's it's not super obvious that they're here. There's a there's oh, a bruiser camp. Oh, now it's super obvious. Yep, <laughs> showing themselves kind of gives up the game there. Yeah, get <laughs> to clear that up quite nicely. Gale Pass scouting out with Flame Strike as well. They don't want to take the risk. They knew they were in that area. Still going to scout out just to be sure. Artanis. Going to move down. They won't be able to do anything about to see these Impalers being taken, but because of this, they'll be able to clear up the minions and also the Impalers without too much effort, while Rag wrecks top lane. Yeah, ticks, getting some uh, nice value. They give yeah. the retreat ping right on time, will not get called by Tychus. Yeah, Tychus will defend the fort though, so that will be just a little bit of comfort for Polska here. And now we see both teams chasing each other. Wolves was attempting to just grab someone on the tail end of the rotation of Polska here. Not able to get it, so instead Tossers moving into the mid lane. They're gonna, be, uh, gonna begin pushing that while uh, while Polska grabs another Fallen. Yeah, nice double Impaler camps here. And not too important actually to respond to the Fallen Shaman since they still have their top forward. It will die to it, that's the strength of the Bruiser. Hold that thought, the nice swap on Glue Hammer. Oh, he's super dead. He is super dead. He gets completely wiped out. The power of double fire. Ragnaros and Kael'thas just obliterating him. And that is very bad timing for Polska. They yes. are now down a hero in time for the objective versus Kael'thas and Ragnaros. They're just going to clean this up. And Polska, in exchange, they're like, well, we have to do something and they're going to push the bot lane. And Dutcher, Gluehammer's death is bad for another reason. If he was going to die... He should have picked any other lane than that one, because they got a free Fallen Shaman clear from that. Just the fact that the Fallen Shamer was there, like, completely means that he oh. should not even be there. Because always they were going to go there to defend it, potentially. Oh, that is a... Okay, well, it's three versus four in the bot lane. Best teams who completely sack the objective and willingly take that 5v4, get the kill first, and get the objective later. It's really difficult to organize this on ladder, 
but it is a correct response. Now, now that they see it's not a proper fight, Kel'thas turns around and Shift gets the Punisher. And the fight breaks yep. out again. Mopsio jumps in. He wants Rag, but Rag now has that uh, armor thanks to his level 13 talent doing some good damage. In comes the Sulfurus doing huge damage to Mopsio. Shift getting zoned out. He retreats though, drops the Phoenix. He's getting lasered pretty hard. He needs to run away. He's able to survive, but it's going to be Sonya that dies in exchange because the team got so split. Mopsio gets slowed. Wolf continues to chase. He does have that warp sickness if he can get to Sonya or Zhuf again. And he's going to try to get Aww. the flip and Zhuf is dead. Super dead, yeah. Uh, oh, I like that. Ragnaros Artana synergy. He gives the blast wave to Artanas, giving him that movement speed that he so desperately craves. Gets closer, gets to Q and E swap, and takes down Malfurion. Excellent Artanas play here by Wolves, and what a great game here by Tossers. Uh, basically, uh, doing the upset on Polska. At the beginning of this series, I thought Polska is going to be doing it, but at 1 1, and when I saw the draft, and the tendencies of Polska, they weren't changing. I really thought Tossers had it. And they're doing so well with their picks here. And Nubarak, not really a meta hero for the last few weeks. But they're doing it with the Nubarak, with Artanas. Ragnaros' trade is coming out here. And they're destroying the core tetcher. Yeah, CC Shickle. So he gets wiped out by the final damage from Ragnaros. And that is GG. And it is going to be Tossers who take the final game in the Grand Finals. And that beautiful 120 points which is going to put them right up in the standings and the good $600 prize money. Very well done. We have a new winner. It's not Team Zealot again. I could have sworn that Zealot would win both of them, uh, but uh, it was not to be. Tosser, the new champion here for now. They win the second cup and a second place, very respectably, to Polska Pamienta. They brought their Triple Warrior game to HGC Europe Open Division Cup 2, Polska Pimenta, and they had really good success with it. But finally, the equation was solved. The riddle was solved by Tossers in Anubarak and Bloodlust. They were able to counter this composition. Very cool. Yeah, just really solid play. And uh, they were able to win that without fully sacking Convection, I would like to point out. I, uh, he, he never actually got to the end. Never died, but he also never got to the end. What? Yep. Hey, he never died, and he didn't get the quest? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's damage the rag, but he spent most of his time clearing, and everyone was, even even though it's a Sonya comp with Zarya, they were actually really split up, and that's a good reason why Sonya actually died four times. What they spells to, has they he were been, split so well. What spells has he been casting? Only Chain Bomb and Gravity Lapse? <laughs> he, was, he cast everything, he just didn't hmm. get the hits. Is Does that make him a better player or a worse? I don't know. He didn't die. Is it more so... or less impressive? Not dying is great, and they do, won the game. Get... Uh, well, Flame Strike, it increases the damage whether you keep it or whether you die or not. Yeah, uh, sure. Sorry, you keep, the you keep the damage whether you finish it or not. So I think it's still good play that he didn't die and lose any of the damage. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I was <laughs> mostly just joking, <laughs> but interesting fact there. And I guess, you know, I guess it wasn't needed. And what's more, when you're attacking, Flame Strikes are harder to hit than when you're defending. Because the exactly. opponent's movement has more flexibility. And... They were mostly winning. It's 13 and 2 in takedowns. Tossers will be your champion today, guys. And if you think you can do better, or if you think you'd like to play without doing better, it's both okay. Uh, there, are, there will not be an interview when you want to sign up. You can sign up yourself for Cup number three. It's organized by Gosu Gamers. And uh, I entered the link in my chat commands of Robogrub. He's always ready to help. Uh, exclamation mark sign up. You can uh, try to enroll yourself. It will happen in 13 days from now, on a Monday. And uh, there'll be many more cups like it. So familiarize yourself with the site, bookmark it, and uh, get together with four friends and try to uh, play one of these cups. It'll be fun. And uh, maybe you'll do more than just having fun. Maybe you'll uh, find a new path. Indeed. And all you have to do, uh, it's definitely worth emphasizing here, that you don't have to get the most points at the end. All you have to do is to get to that top 16 and you have a chance of, you get entered into the playoffs. And it's the playoffs that you need to win to make it to the Crucible. The so Crucible. what you need to do is to keep playing consistently. And if one team, say, came third and you consistently finish in the top 16, you have a decent chance of uh, sneaking your way in. Exactly. So good luck with that, guys. Uh, we hope you had a good time. That was it for today. Uh, for the broadcast of HGC Europe Open Division. 
Cup 2. We'll be back in 13 days and looking forward to bringing you some more awesome games here from the European region. Today's games were even better than two weeks ago. The skill is going up, the infrastructure is there and the grassroots system is working. I'm very pleased to see. And of course, uh, this Friday as well, we'll have the HGC Pro Division once again kicking off with Europe and North America going at it. The top eight best teams from each respective region. The time for that, Friday 1800 CET, 12 noon EST and 9 a.m. PST, if you can somehow watch from work or from home, if uh, your work is at uh, night shift, for instance. So those are the times. Hope you had a good time today. I'm Grubby and with me was Tetcher. You can follow us on Twitter, at follow Grubby and at Tetcher. Tetcher, any shit last shout outs? Uh, shout out to you. Thank you for casting with me again. Had a absolutely wonderful time. And uh, we did miss out one thing in terms of the uh, shout outs for the stream. Uh, the EU Open Division is every two weeks. If you miss us next week, and I'm sure you will, we have someone very nice to hold you over. It is the NA Open Division cast by the fantastic Jay Howe and the marvelous Solid Jake. Awesome. All right, guys, have a good evening. See you guys next time in the next. Win or lose, they need this objective to be over pretty fast and expect yeah. them to make a move. They need to start tranquility as well. They need to do an engage, start tranquility, back off, and then re-engage. But it's not yeah. easy, because can you really give away the shrine for that long? And Noob is able to actually hold through the front line there without popping his heroic, which is a seriously big deal for him. There's a good start onto Sonya, who's cleansed through. And Noob into the back line, distracting Grabbaketa, zoning him out from any tranquility. He's able to get Poik as well. The Sulfurus is huge, but Ancestral will keep Shiko alive. Poti able to shield himself as well. Zabani getting shredded by Gloohammer. And ETC coming in to try and save. Moshpit is available here, but can he do anything with it? They're also split.